Hi everyone, uh, today I'm just going to be showing you a quick guide on how to use my new Shmup Reloaded plugin for GBCU 3.2. Uh, it pretty much adds uh, eight-way movement and a bunch of other convenient features for making a Shmup easily in GB Studio that aren't in the base version. Uh, so of course the first thing you're going to want to do is head on over to the link in the description, uh, my GitHub where you can actually download the plugin. I'm going to go to this page, hit code, and hit download zip so you can download the zip. Once you've got the zip, you want to grab the shmup reloaded folder from it. Uh, here it is. And drag it into your project folder. So this is my project folder for my game. I have a folder called plugins in the root, and then I've dragged the shmup reloaded plugin uh, here into the plugins folder. And then shmup reloaded plugin should look like this. Uh, if your folder structure looks like this, you're good to go. Let's head on over to GB Studio now. I'm going to quickly show you how to use the new features uh, in Shmup Reloaded. So this is actually a game I'm developing at the moment. Um, it's got a bunch of stuff already made in it, like enemies, but I'm going to show you the basics anyway. Uh, so let's get rid of this trigger for a moment. This is a level, of course. Um, so you can do horizontal or vertical scrolling with Shmup Reloaded, but um, you want to start with a 160 by 144 pixel scene, uh, which is the size of one Game Boy screen, and then you either stretch it in a horizontal direction, like I have here, or a vertical direction, like I have in this uh, example I'll show in a minute. Um, so first we're going to look at horizontal scrolling. Pretty much all you have to do, press P to place your player where you want the player to start, uh, in the start of the scene, and then select a uh, direction for the player that corresponds with the direction you want the screen to scroll in. So here I want it to scroll left or right, so I'm making the player face right. Yep, it's working. So we have full eight-way movement uh, that respects the scrolling boundaries, as you can see. And uh, you can also use faster speed. So I'm using, I think, play speed three maybe here, and it doesn't glitch out because in the base game or in the base GB Studio, it would glitch out. Now, there is one thing you might notice here. There's no collision with the UI in this scene. So we're going to fix that right now. And you're probably going to want to do this in your project as well. Um, I'm just going to go ahead, draw, oops, background collision over the UI, and that will block it off so the player can't go over it. Uh, the plugin does support this, however, it doesn't support putting obstacles in the way of the player. You can only use it to block off uh, whole sections of the screen. No support for obstacles, because I want to keep the plugin nice and simple to use. That would make it a lot more complicated. Anyway, let's check and see if this worked. And, yep, as you can see, uh, now you can't go over the UI. Cool. Um, and if you're interested in learning how to make a UI like this, um, I have tutorials on how to make a uh, overlay HUD with GBVM on my GB Studio Lab website, which will also be linked in the description as per usual. All right. Um, so that's an example of scrolling left to right. Of course, if you want to go right to left, all you have to do is put your player in the appropriate starting position and switch their direction to left. And there we go, now we're scrolling right to left. But of course, you'll actually have to set up your game so that everything faces right to left, which I haven't done here. Um, same thing for vertical scrolling. Put the player where you want it to start, um, set the direction, and play. And there we have nice vertical scrolling. Of course, it's a terrible background, but I could be bothered making a good one for this video. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show is the new trigger system. So usually in GB Studio, triggers activate when the player passes over them. So this is a player, blah, blah, blah. You go touch the trigger and it activates. But that's not very useful for shmups because usually you want to activate things when the camera reaches them. So that's how shmup reloaded works. When the camera touches this trigger, um, it will activate the on enter script. I'm going to show an example here. We've got this trigger that says, hi, I'm a trigger. I'm going to put it at the end of the level, and that means when the camera hits the end of the level, it will activate the script. All right, we're coming up to the end of the level here, and the trigger activated because the camera had reached the end. 
Um, this is super useful in a shmup for things like respawning enemies, spawning enemies, uh, going to the next level when you reach the end of a level, all sorts of things. So that's why I replaced the trigger system with this trigger system. Um, by the way, the trigger, if you're scrolling horizontally, must touch um, the top tile of the scene. So technically, it doesn't have to cover the whole screen. It just needs to be at the top. That's where the uh, engine checks. And if you're doing vertical scrolling, it just needs to be at the left. So the engine will check this tile going up here or down here. But I like to make them full width because it's just easier to visualize, you know, when the camera reaches this trigger, it will activate. Much uh, easier way to do it. All right, that about wraps it up for triggers. Uh, let's take a look at a couple more of the features of Shmup Reloaded. Uh, first, let's take a peek at the player sprite. Don't look here, there's a few spoilers for this game that's not quite out yet. Oh, maybe it is out by the time you're watching this video. Um, but here's my player sprite. So pretty much you want to set your player sprite up as four directions plus movement. Um, and then when you are pressing up, down, left or right, uh, your player will change to the moving right, moving left, moving up, moving down sprites. So you can see I've got ship wiggles a little bit when you press up and down. And then when you're not pressing any buttons, it will switch to the appropriate idle animation. And you can see here, all my idle animations are the same because that's usually what you want to do for shmup. Also, the bounding box of my player is quite small. Uh, usually in shmups, you want to give your character a small collision box because it feels better. You know, the player can dodge things a little bit more easily. Um, but in base GB Studio, you would have an issue if you have a small bounding box uh, for detecting collisions with projectiles, it would also use that uh, bounding box for detecting collisions with the scene. Uh, so I've somewhat remedied this in Shmup Reloaded. Uh, you can see that the player has a really small bounding box, but if we actually go into the game, um, you'll see that the player actually uses an 8x8 box for their collisions. So your character will always use 8x8 to collide with the edges of the screen, so the character is always visible at all times. But you can set whatever bounding box you want for collisions with projectiles, etc. Um, I just thought that would be a handy feature because, you know, shmups and small collision boxes are a match made in heaven. Anyway, let's see. I think that's basically it for Shmup Reloaded. Yeah, that's it for the first version of Shmup Reloaded. I'm really excited to see people make real shmups because up until this point, We've only had two-way movement on the left side of the screen or bottom side of the screen, kind of like Space Invaders style. So I really, really hope uh, we get some cool shmups out there. Um, keep an eye on GB Studio Lab and my Twitter for more stuff about making shmups because once this game is finished, by the way, it's getting... Don't look at that production art. <laughs> it's getting pretty big. It's only about five minutes long, but it's kind of like a score attack style thing. Um, but yeah, once I finish this shmup, I'm sure I'll have heaps of tips and maybe some extra plugins to share with you guys on how to make a cool shmup in GB Studio. It's finally possible. I'm so happy because I wanted to get this done like a couple of years ago and I couldn't, but finally, shmups in GB Studio, it's gonna happen. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, please try out the plugin and check out uh, GB Studio Lab and my Twitter and of course the channel for more updates on uh, GB Studio stuff.